Hi everybody, this is Gary, and we're going to do a holiday photography challenge. The idea is you're going to create a holiday card quality photograph and send it to me via my email, which is on the screen right now, and I'll choose the winner. The winner will have their picture displayed on the homepage of my website, on my Flickr account, and my Facebook page, as well as my Facebook wall. Additionally, you will win this Adorama cleaning kit. And this cleaning kit gives you the ability to clean your lenses, your camera. This cleaning kit will fit inside your camera bag. You can have it with you at all times. So it's a pretty cool thing. All right, so the challenge is you're going to create a holiday card quality photograph. In other words, something that you would see on a Christmas card. Uh, you know, you could use it for your email, if you want to print it out, make your own card, whatever. So, here, here are the rules. You can use your DSLR, of course. Now, right now I have the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens that I've been recommending you guys buy, but you can also use your kit lens for this, if you want to. Um, and a tripod. You can use a tripod and your camera. You're not allowed to use the built-in flash. You're not allowed to use any external flashes. The only equipment you can use is your camera and the tripod. Additionally, you have to shoot manually. Now, when you send me the images, I'll be able to tell because in the uh, EXIF data that, that gets recorded with every image, I can actually look at that and it'll tell me what mode you shot in. So if you didn't shoot manually, I'll know and that will disqualify you. So, you have to create the exposure. That's the whole point of this. The challenges are, number one, you have to probably be shooting in low light, like I am right now. This is indoor low light. We've talked about this many times in the class. So this will give you some practice shooting in low light. Number two, you'll get to practice composition because you're gonna have to create an interesting photograph with nothing more than your camera. All right, so I'm gonna shoot a few things around my house. If you have Christmas or holiday decorations around your house, you can certainly do that. If you don't, you can go to a friend's house, you can go to a store. All right, so I'm gonna shoot a few things. I'm gonna start with this Christmas tree. And um, once again, my 50 millimeter F1.8. So now I'm at F1.8, 1 250th of a second, which is more than fast enough for shooting handheld. ISO 200. So you know what? I'm dropping it to 100. Slow my shutter down even more. Now that I've got my overall exposure correct, or at least in the ballpark, I can concentrate on step two, which is trying to create an interesting composition. Now, the closest focusing distance of this lens is about 18 inches. So I can't get in as close as I would like to, therefore, I have to make sure that I take advantage of the very narrow depth of field that this lens offers me. Oh. All right, so now I'll take one horizontal. I'm going to get in as close as I can and still focus. Okay. Um, so now, looking over here, I've got some Christmas balls. I'll take a shot. Again, trying to take advantage of the narrow depth of field. By the way, I have my camera on a timer, so when I push the shutter button, I have to wait two seconds, and that's because I forgot to take it off timer. All right, so that's the idea. You kind of walk around the room looking for things to shoot. Here we are in the dining room, and the reason that I'm here is because I want to show you what to do if you want to shoot an ornament that has lights on it. It's a little tricky because if you shoot it and try and get a normal exposure, the lights will either be, you know, the right uh, brightness, but your everything else will be too dark, or the lights will be blown out and you'll probably see whatever it is you're trying to shoot okay. Or something in between. The point is, our cameras can't see this huge change in contrast the way our eyes can. So these lights are much brighter than this. 
these pine needles and these ornaments. They're much brighter. So the cameras are going to make them look even brighter. Therefore, we have to come up with a strategy. Now, I understand that a lot of times you can't dim the lights that you're trying to shoot. However, in this case, I can. So I can go over to my dimmer, and if I dim these lights down to make them closer to the brightness of the light reflecting off the actual the subject itself, I have a much better shot of having this look pleasant. All right, so I'm, in order to do a shot like this, I have to put my camera on a tripod. That's, that's a necessity because it's going to be very low light. Now, right now, there's, some, there's a lot of light in here because I have a, a continuous light set up so we can shoot the video. But I'm just going to show you what the lighting is actually like by temporarily turning off this video light. Okay, so that's the light I'm actually going to be shooting under. Therefore, I need a very long exposure because there's hardly any light. And the only light, as it turns out, the only light is really coming from these lights here. Therefore, that's my light source. That's going to be lighting the whole scene. I have to get these lights low enough so I can... So isn't it too much of a contrast between this area and the lights themselves? but bright enough so they actually throw enough light on here so you can see what it is. So that means the lights actually have to be very dim. That also means that my exposure has to be very long. So I'm going to turn off the video light while I get my exposure because I need to set my exposure for the light that I'm going to be shooting in. I'm going to actually change my ISO to 50 because I want the lowest ISO possible. That gives me a four second exposure. So let's see what that looks like. Now, um, this is why I had the timer on, because when I push the shutter button, that'll create enough camera shake to maybe throw out my focus. Therefore, I have a two second timer. When I push the shutter button, the camera will count down two seconds and then open the shutter. That way, there's absolutely no vibration from me touching the camera at all. So here we go. It's going to be a four second exposure right now. So now the, kind of the shutter's open. It'll stay open for four seconds. And there we go. Looking at the back of my screen here, the light is too bright. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to dim the light a little more. I'm going to turn the video light back on because I just want to double check my focus. I want to make sure that the thing I want to be in focus is in fact in focus which means I have to turn auto focusing back on it's all right now my my depth of field is very very thin so I'm focusing on this front light and everything else behind the light is going to go soft very quickly that's the shot I want whether I can get it or not remains to be seen. I'm going to turn the light off. All right, so I had to dim the lights even more. So now I'm going to raise my exposure up to about eight seconds. Take the shot. Timer counts down. Now the shutter's open for eight seconds. During the whole time the shutter's open, whatever light is in this room, which to the naked eye is not much, is getting into the camera. Okay, and I actually got a really nice shot. So that's how you would shoot in low light. That's why you need a tripod. Therefore, once again, to do this challenge, you use your camera and a tripod and that's it. That is enough. Use what you have and learn to get good with the equipment that you have. And then if you find that you need something like a filter or whatever it is, then you can go buy it and you're not just throwing money at a problem when really the problem is you because knowledge beats gear any day of the week. So that's really sort of the context in which you would do this challenge. Okay, it's create an interesting photograph um, with the equipment you have.